Just How's that? That's better. Are we close enough? Uh, we are. Okay. Very close. We're in the screen together. I see us. Okay. And I forgot the clapper, so we're gonna have to do this the old way, oh. the, like we did in the days before we had the clapper. Okay. And action. Action. <laughs> so Elizabeth has been saying for a while that we both love the Poscas. I mean, they're a staple in my studio. I know there are in hers as well. But she's been asking, not that I have any influence over the people who make them, for <laughs> colors that weren't quite so bright. Um, and she was looking for a more muted palette. And lo and behold, Uni slash Posca produced or re re released a whole wealth of new colors. I think there are seven or eight of them. I have a chart here, but I'm missing one. With that said, the most of the colors that were new, and I mean brand new at this point, I, we have two distinctions here. We have brand new colors that haven't existed previously, and then we have some colors that are now available in different tip sizes. So navy blue was available a while ago, and I think it was only available in the PC5M, and now you can get it in a 3M, or vice versa. It was one or the other. So those are our two kind of places. Lavender is a brand new color, and of course it's purple, and I'm always gonna be a 12-year-old girl, so I'm always gonna love purple or glittery purple. And unicorns. And, well, no, I'm not such a unicorn person. Horses? Yes, but no, I knew that. No unicorn horns. <laughs> anyway, so today we're playing with the new colors, and Elizabeth really got what she was looking for, which is a more earthy palette that is not quite so in your face. There's no fluorescent colors in it. It's muted a muted color palette that actually and I say this when we actually do our bits I was a little bit um unimpressed I was not really looking forward to this but I like what I did and I like the color combinations and I have this preconceived notion or this palette in mind that I like to work with and yes this certainly falls into that but what she did is really really nice that has that muted feel your palette is pink and purple that's it Turquoise too. Turquoise, pink, and purple. That's it. Well, That's your palette. Simple. I'm a 12 year old. I'm a simple 12 so, year old girl. So Barb's Posca drawer includes three colors in every tip. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little bit of an example. This is a lot of tips, and the fact that you remembered all of those numbers is quite impressive. I have to ask my husband what our zip code is. You do not. I did yesterday. <laughs> Andrew is a special guy. He is. <laughs> I keep telling her he's a keeper. <clears throat> well, you know, it was out of context. It was a form that just wanted my zip code. And without all the rest of the business, it was hard to remember. <laughs> <laughs> you get to a certain age and stuff just flees your brain. It does. To make room for new stuff. That's right. I have to forget something old to remember something new. And these are new colors and new things that you have to remember. So don't forget about me, though. Okay, I Okay. Yeah, there's a song, Don't Forget About Me. Right. Yeah, we're really hearkening to our past. Anyway, so possibly. <laughs> so we have all the tips, well, not all the tip sizes. We have colors in a variety of new tip sizes. And the good news is, is that we're going to hold the 25% off sale. So you can save 25% on all the colors and all the sizes, even if they're not new. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. You going to show what you did? Yes. So in the video, I show you uh, that I'm doodling and pulling a print with a neutral color, but I also wanted to just show you that in the practice run, I doodled with the uh, new palette and pulled it with a not so neutral color, which was kind of fun. And then I, in the beginning, was just doing stripey lines on the gel plate, you know, because I didn't know what else to do. And I pulled those before they were dry. So I put the, the paint on too soon after I drew the stripes and the stripes were still wet and it bled into the paint. And when I pulled this, we both said, wow, that is so cool. And then Barb, of course, her snarky self said, good luck reproducing that. <laughs> and she was 100% right. You know, you get something amazing like this and you're like, yes, I love it. And I tried to do it again. Not quite the same. It didn't, for whatever reason though, you gave you thought you gave this one a ton of time for those paint markers, uh, the paint marks to dry. Yeah. And they still bled anyway. And on the second one with the beige background, you actually gave it no time to dry. And this is what it did. Yeah, I was moving fast. And I did a second one with the pink background. It wasn't the pink paint that made the difference. So uh, it's like anything else with gel printing. You, you can take the same steps and try to reproduce something that you love and it's just never exactly the same. Yeah, your mileage may vary. That's why they're called monoprints, Barb. That's right. One. One print. One print. Shall we go make one Completely print? unique and you'll never get the same one again. Good luck with just that. Just like you and me. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this before or after? I don't know. 
Maybe probably before. All right, so I'm still filming here. Yeah, All just right. keep going. It's All fine. Right. So where are we? I'm going before. Okay, <laughs> trying for the third yes. time. I will confess that I was a little bit skeptical about these colors. Elizabeth, as we mentioned, has been asking for or asking me, doesn't Posca have more subtle earth tones? And I, not that I had anything to do with it, but coincidentally, they released this group a little while ago. This is a video that probably is happening maybe five months after they release these. But with that said, these would not necessarily be my first choice of colors, but I really like the way that this came out. So we have... I used the lavender a lot because it's kind of my thing, but I brought in the green and the ruby red. I also brought in some white. And though I did use the Prussian blue that looks very dark purple in places, that's this color here. It's the same thing out here, but it almost looks black, but it is what it is. It, the surface that you're working on obviously can affect these things and what you see around it. So this is me kind of doodling on the front and back cover of this just to play around and mess with the colors because I liked this group especially together. So one of the things that's worth noting, and again, here's my skepticism. Whoops, that's upside down. This is the, let me think about this. This is the 49 and Market. This is Moonlit Garden Collection. And this is one of the, the larger of the two notebooks in the Spiral Bound Notebook set. So these two colors, now khaki green is not a brand new color. It was a new color in the PC5M tip size, and this is navy. These work really, really well with the colors in Moonlit Garden. So if you have this collection and you're thinking about adding to it, and you can see that I just came in and I scribbled and I dotted and I did a few things here. These are, this is beautiful on its own. You don't actually have to do anything with it, but you certainly can, and these colors work really well. Lavender is a color that is not only brand new, it's brand new across four tip sizes. So this is the PC1MR. This is the tip where it's got the metal ring around it and it produces a pretty fine line. I'm gonna skip this one for a second. This is the PC3M. That's a reasonably fine bullet tip. This is the PC5M that is a much chunkier bullet tip. And then this is the PC1M, and this is the one that you'll sometimes hear me talk about, and I say that it spits. So I haven't primed this one, but I'm going to do it for I'm going to do it for you. So Posca recommends pressing straight down and holding. I do sometimes get a little impatient, and I'll want to bump, bounce this up and down. And honestly, I don't think it makes a darn bit of difference. So when you've seen me prime these recently, I've been at home, and I live at elevation, which means that the ink, excuse me, the paint that's in that reservoir has a tendency to come out very quickly. Here, it takes a little bit more time. We're in Sacramento at, I don't know, roughly sea level, I guess, or not a whole heck of a lot above sea level. And it does take a little bit of time. So I will say that my partner in crime across from me um, was a little impatient during this process. There was a lot of whining and complaining about, oh, come on, really? really there was. I said we should hire someone to do this. <laughs> You did, yes, but you were <laughs> aggravated. It does take, you know, if you spend a minute per pen. Forever. Minute, that was a little bit too much for Elizabeth. Too long for me. I was ready to hire it out. Yeah, I know, because, yeah. Well, and in all honesty, we did have a whole bunch of these that we had to prime, so it did take some time. But it does, it takes however long it takes. If you live at elevation, then you can expect it to go much more quickly. If you don't, then you're just going to have to be patient and let the paint flow from that reservoir and come down to the tip. Next time, there we're going to drive to Tahoe and prime them there. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. All right, so this is the PC1M, and this is considered, this is a bullet shape. This is a fine tip. The difference between the PC1M and the PC1MR, not only is the, the line width a little bit, but you can see the 1MR has that metal ring around it and the 1M simply comes down to a point. This is the one that occasionally I find will spit if I'm trying to write with it. Now it won't do it now just to spite me. But if you pull straight towards you, it makes really super fine lines, especially if you go really light on the pressure. But if you do this, sometimes, and it, like I said, it's not going to do it. Sometimes it will, oh, it's there it doing is. It. it did. It spits a little bit. Now, maybe that's something that you want to capture and that's okay. But the other thing that I wanted to mention is these are pigments. This is paint. And so even on black, you have coverage because Unlike a dye marker, and this one needs to be primed a little bit more, unlike a dye marker, this is paint. 
and it's not transparent. So you can work on a variety of different surfaces and you're gonna get that coverage. So there are, I think I counted them, and there are the seven, these are brand new colors and we talked about this in the opening. Um, plus there's new colors in, existing colors rather, in new tip sizes. So the Posca line continues to grow and you can't argue with that because it's really good stuff. I am having fun doodling with the Posca pens on the gel plate with my stencil from the Klimt collection that is called Leaves. At first we thought it was called Triangles, Barb and I, but we looked it up and thank goodness we figured that out, right? Absolutely, it always helps to know what you're talking about. Yes. Sometimes we even do. <laughs> Sometimes we even do. So what I'm doing is doodling inside the triangles with my new Posca colors. And check these out. These are, let me slide this over just a little bit. Look at that. So these are all kinds of cool colors that I am very excited about because they're uh, a little bit more towards earth tone, a little bit less saturated, a little bit br less bright and intense. They're kind of uh, muted and I really like them. So I am using uh, coloring in the solids here. I'm using the um, bullet point, the PC5M. They look like that. And then um, for the stripes, um, I used the smaller tips and that's the PC3M. And those look like this. So I find these are really good for doing stripes or dashes or dots or doodles or marks in the openings like this. And the bigger tips are good for coloring them all in. And, you know, we, we thought about or we talked about doing this. And Barb was like, oh, that's going to take you forever to color in all those triangles, right? But that's kind of the idea because the fun of this... Oh, here's another one of those thinner tips. The fun of this is the process of just enjoying being in the moment and doodling and coloring in with the markers. There's no rush to get it finished in one sitting. You could go away and come back. Um, but I think all too often with art, sometimes we miss the, the idea that the process of it is fun. Just going through the motions of it is fun. So in other words, you know, embrace the time that it takes to color in these triangles, Barb. Yes, ma'am, shall do. <laughs> and I colored it in, in most of them off camera so that you wouldn't have to embrace it along with me. <laughs> we have it done. Um, I did a series of stripes, solids, and polka dots in all of these clipped leaves. And I try to alternate the colors, kind of space them out and around. And I think... We're close to, like I've got two purples in a row here. I don't want to do another one, so I'm going to go with something totally different. And this red is kind of very cool. Of course, I'm next to red again there, but that's okay. This is, what did we say this was called? Uh, ruby red. This is one of my favorites. Okay, so. That was the one I thought I couldn't find. Oh, oh it's yeah. It's hard some days. It's hard to be me. It is. Okay, I think I colored them all in, Barb. All right, well, good for you. Did you enjoy it? Were you in the moment the whole time? The whole time. Awesome. We were just talking, yes. and um, while I was doing this, we were talking about all kinds of different things, right? Well, yeah, because we haven't seen each other in a month. Yeah, so we're just, you know, we chit-chatting away, and I was just uh, coloring in these spaces. Yeah, I've done it twice now, Barb, and I've enjoyed it both times. And I'm so happy for you. <laughs> This is not Barb's cup of tea, obviously. But fabulous, fabulous, fabulous colors. So now I colored through the stencil, right? Sometimes you see me, I make a ghost print on the plate and then I color in the ghost print. So this is different. So I colored, I used the stencil as my template and I colored in all these fun triangles. Look now at that. that part I think is really cool when you pick it up and the stencil's out of the way and you can see what's left. Yes, you can see what's left. Now, I mean, you could get you could get even more adventurous and you could take your foam stamp and then stamp some patterns on top of this, let that dry and then pull it. Um, you could come back in with Posca and make some doodles around in the open spaces. There's some other, you know, things you could add to this. Um, but I'm for, you know, the simplicity of seeing all the triangles and the pattern. I'm just going to pull it like this. But I will say that um, I have uh, added stamping to it and it could be fun or doodling in between or whatever. So um, 
On a side note, if the Posca pens leave a stain behind on your gel plate and that bothers you, because it's not gonna affect how the plate works at all, but if the staining bothers you, then you just need to take some baby oil, which is mineral oil, and rub it across and it will completely take out the Posca stains marks. Uh, but they will also come out with subsequent, subsequent prints. But if you really need it to be pristine before you put it away, clean it with a little baby oil. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull this with a neutral color. This is warm gray. I figured this is a good neutral for these kind of earthy tones, nothing bright or crazy. Hopefully that's dry, Barb. We're gonna find out, aren't we? If it's not dry, it's gonna smear a little bit. Uh, when you want it to smear, it doesn't, and when you don't want it to smear, it does. Kinda, that's one of life's little ironies. Yeah, it kind of works that way. So we'll see what happens. You know, if it smears, though, we're going to be okay with it. We're going to be okay with whatever because we had fun doing it, Barb. And you managed to pick up the squeaky brayer again. So yay you. I brought that for you specifically. Oh. I auditioned all the brayers at my house and made sure I picked the squeakiest one and brought it. That's not true. <laughs> it was luck of the draw, and you know how that goes. It was Murphy's Law. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my... Baron, my four inch speedball Baron, which is my new favorite tool, honest to goodness, because I don't have to rub all the moisture out of my hands on the plate with this. And the key to this is give it a little bit of time for the um, layer of paint to pull the Posca markers. So it's not gonna stick or it hasn't stuck for me, but I feel that if I wait a few minutes, I get more of the markers off the plate than if I pull it right away. And some colors are gonna leave behind a stain, so they're not all gonna come up perfectly. Let's see what we got. Ooh, look at that, Barb. See, so like the pink grabs and stays, but the other colors have not. Then there's a little bit of yellow that stays, so it depends on the color. Wow, I love it. I'm gonna wrap your birthday gift in this. My birthday was a month ago. Oh. All right, I'm gonna wrap your Valentine's gift in this. Okay, good. Look at that. You know, inevitably someone's gonna to say to me, well, why would I wanna go through all the effort of doing this on the gel plate instead of just directly on the paper, right? That's a reasonable question. So I want you to look at this kind of evisceration in the way those got picked up and the way the line quality is different. This is what you get with indirect printing, which is different than direct printing. So direct printing would be me putting the marker right on the paper. But the indirect printing of going on the plate and then to the paper gives you some really interesting line quality in those marks. And um, that, to me, makes it seem more painterly and less like a marker. But you get that pickup color that's coming through those lines, which I think is pretty interesting. Yeah, it's really neat. It almost has like a block printing kind of a feeling, right? That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yes. which is an indirect printing method. So yeah, anyway, I do really like this and I'm really excited about these new colors. And, um, you know, the process of doodling and making Barb's uh, wrapping paper. Fantastic. <laughs> Why not? So, in conclusion... I'm going to tell you something I should have told you in the introduction. So, you're not going to be able to read this, but this is a color chart that I had available when I was trying to figure out which were the new colors. And I went this. You can, obviously, you can uh, reproduce that yourself if you want. That is, I want to say, all but one of the new colors, and that's all in the PC... <laughs> What are you doing over I'm there? I'm trying to get it clear, but I'm in the in, I'm covering you while you're talking. Yeah, that's all right. So that doesn't help. So no, but these all happen to be in the PC5M. There's one new color named Glacier Blue that's only available in the. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That's only available in the PC1MR size, and hopefully we will have all of these in stock. I think we have most of them now, and I will order to make certain that we have them. But if we don't, it's because I couldn't get them. Probably because they're really popular. Yeah. Even though they're still, you know, they're six months old at this point. So lots of fun. Poscas are easy. They're usable for just about anything that you can think of, whether you're gel printing like Elizabeth did, you're doodling like I did, or pretty much anything in between. They're multi-surface. The one thing I didn't say, for all but the PC350s, which are the brush marker, Posca recommends or Uni recommends that you store them horizontally. Oh, good to know. Actually, I take that back. Let me rephrase that. The PC, sorry, the the 350, which is the brush, is the one they recommend storing horizontally. These can go anyway, but I just put them all in bags and that way they're all horizontal. Um, so I said that badly the first time, but I corrected it. We could boop. 
We could, but we didn't. Nah, we just keep it. Yeah. It seems more real that way with you messing up the entire situation. Sister, I am really <laughs> real because I can screw up anything. I keep mine all in a drawer, flat. Yes, yeah, and that way you don't have to think about it. They're just there. I have a million little bags. I keep them mostly sorted by color until I come here and she screws the whole I mess up the up. whole system. Yeah, there's stuff. It's the first thing I do is go through all the bags and mix them all up. Because it makes you happy. Yeah, it makes me happy. And you know, it drives me nuts. Yes, I know that too. <laughs> but yeah, no, I like keeping them flat. I think if you store them vertical, there may be a potential for the paint to like all kind of like drip to the tip. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I just, I, I like to keep them in a drawer. Um, and that seems to work. Yeah. So. All right. All right. Right. Well then, we'll see you next time. Right. And maybe, hopefully, next time we'll have the clapper. That's right. I forgot it. She's so bad. Bye. <laughs>